Today, it's hard to imagine Samsung without Android. The two are almost inseparable. Samsung's Galaxy smartphones are what people think of when they think of Android. According to Trendforce, Samsung held the 19% global smartphone market share in Q2 of 2025. But did you know there was a time when Samsung was actually planning to ditch Android altogether? This is the story of Samsung's forgotten experiments with their own operating systems. Before the iPhone changed everything, Samsung was already experimenting with different smartphone operating systems. They had devices like the Samsung Blackjack running Windows Mobile 5, the SGH1400 with Symbian and the SPH i550 with palm os but after the iphone launched in 2007 it was clear ios was far ahead of symbian and windows mobile moreover samsung's phones were selling that well either so in december 2009 samsung unveiled their answer to the iphone bada os at the launch event they released an SDK for app development and even announced a developer contest with their $2.7 million prize pool. With the slogan, Smartphones for Everyone, Samsung's intention was clear. At Mobile World Congress 2010, Samsung released their first Bada phone, the Samsung Web S8500. And here's the twist. In the very same year, Samsung also released the original Galaxy S. Why both? Because Samsung wasn't sure if Bada would succeed, so Android was their backup plan. Both phones had some similarities including their user interface, TouchWiz. Yes, that infamous TouchWiz. In fact, TouchWiz existed even before Bada appearing on Samsung's few feature phones. Reviews of the Wave praised its hardware, especially the build quality and the Super AMOLED display, which was one of the best of its time. But the story was different for the software. Despite having a smooth UI, the OS had some issues including the inconsistent performance of the WebKit-based Dolphin browser, limited multitasking, and a lack of essential apps made it weaker than iOS and Android. Even though big names like Gameloft, Electronic Arts, Facebook, and Twitter were on board, the Bada App Store only had a few thousand apps compared to Android's 200,000. Apps like Twitter also ran poorly due to optimization issues. As a result, despite the web's strong startup selling 1 million units under a month, sales of the Galaxy S quickly outpaced it. Still, Samsung pushed more Bada phones across different price points, releasing the Wave 2, Wave 3, and cheaper models. By Q3 of 2011, Bada actually held about 2.2% market share worldwide, ahead of Windows Phone at that time. With the release of Bada 2.0 at the end of 2011, Samsung tried to fix things like a better browser experience, NFC support, Wi-Fi Direct, multitasking improvements, and even adding voice recognition. But it was too late. Developers had already chosen Android and iOS, which had much larger user base. By 2012, even Samsung admitted the overlap. Bada phones look too much like their Android Galaxy phones, but with fewer apps. At CES 2012, Samsung officially pulled the plug, marking the end of Bada OS. But Samsung wasn't ready to give up on the dream of controlling their own ecosystem. Soon after Bada's death, they merged it with parts of Nokia's abandoned MIGA project to create Tizen. Tizen first appeared in smartwatches like the Galaxy Gear 2. Samsung pitched it as lightweight and battery efficient compared to Android Wear. But the real test came with smartphones. The first Tizen phone the Samsung Z launched in Russia in 2014. It had decent specs for its time including 4.8 inch AMOLED display and LTE support but it never expanded beyond that market. From 2015 to 2017, Samsung released more budget-friendly Z series Tizen smartphones in emerging markets like India and Africa which includes the Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. But these were basic 
devices with entry level Spectrum processors, 1 GB of RAM and just 8 GB of storage, usually selling around $100. Samsung marketed them as affordable alternatives to Android, but they were no match for the budget Galaxy J series smartphones. Unsurprisingly, the Tizen App Store struggled. Most apps were just web app shortcuts and the ecosystem couldn't attract developers. To make things worse, by 2017, Google had locked down Android with stronger licensing agreements, making it even harder for Tizen to stand out. By 2018, the Z4 became the last Tizen smartphone ever. In 2021, Samsung shut down the Tizen App Store entirely. But unlike Bada, Tizen never truly died. It lived on in smartwatches until Samsung merged with Google's Wear OS in 2021. And to this day, Tizen still powers millions of Samsung smart TVs. In the end, Samsung's experiment with Bada and Tizen failed in smartphones, but they still played an important role. Unlike Nokia, which clung to Symbian for too long, Samsung wasn't afraid to experiment. At one point in 2010, they were selling phones running Bada, Android and Windows all at once. We know which path won. But if Samsung had stubbornly stuck with Bada OS, they may not have been the smartphone giant they are today. Sometimes falling fast is what sets up for success. Thanks for sticking out to the end. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any kind of feedback, let me know. Also comment below on which topic you want to see the next video. And obviously don't forget to subscribe this channel. Until then, bye.